You're listening to Business Stories with Ryan Arcarachi, where I speak to business professionals from all walks of life. Thanks for listening, and let's get to it. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's Ryan here. Um, look, I talk to people all the time about how to use video in their sales and marketing approach, and a lot of people don't know how to go about that. They don't know what kind of content they should be using. They don't know what kind of story they should be telling. A lot of people think video means like the early days of the infomercial where you're just screaming at somebody to buy the product. It's the best thing in the world. Call the number, buy, order. My guest, Tom Langan, is an Emmy award-winning video producer. He's worked with NBC. He's worked with the BBC and Discovery. He's got 20 years in the production world. And Tom is here to talk about his idea of how you should structure video for your business, which I think is great. It's not the traditional way of doing video marketing. So Tom, tell us about your background. Thanks for being here. Let us know how you started out with this. Yeah, my pleasure, Ryan. Thanks so much for having me. I do have to, I have to give you one, uh, one little small correction there. Uh, unfortunately I did not win uh the emmy i was i've been i've been fortunate enough to be nominated twice but i didn't win oh okay um, i'm sorry about that but still <laughs> still a great great accomplishment yeah yeah no i appreciate that and uh uh but uh, yeah i just wanted to uh wanted to be clear because i do have uh you know a bunch of friends who have the trophy and don't want to uh don't want to take away from them um but uh but yeah no i uh i i'm super proud of those nominations nonetheless um yeah i think you know to your point with video, I think one of the things that a lot of businesses in particular struggle with um, is is the who should be the subject of the content um, that they that they create and and really who they're creating it for. And I think where they get confused is that they tend to create the video for themselves, right? Um, so often you see advertising content, uh, you see marketing content from businesses um, that is very much akin to that uh, QVC uh, or infomercial kind of content that is all about their products and services. It's all about the business. Um, and they've got it backwards. Uh, the problem is, is that for um, you know the majority of people aren't interested in watching infomercials. What they're interested in uh, is really themselves right uh and and you know where where businesses go wrong is they make content for themselves um about their products and services instead of for their audience um and uh that's that's one of the ways that we aim to help uh or we look to help businesses is to shift the focus off of them shift the focus off of the business off of the products and services and onto the community that they seek to serve um, and, uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we do that in a variety of ways, but, uh, but I think that's one of the big things that we do, uh, a little bit differently is that often, uh, I actually was talking to a client of mine last night who, um, said that I challenge him, uh, and he, and he made sure to me, make clear to me, uh, that he meant that as a positive thing that I push him to think, uh, very carefully about who he is seeking to work with who he is he's looking to serve through his business um, and how we can create content that delivers value to those people uh, rather than creating content that just laundry lists information about his products and services and you you call your concept legend legendering right so explain to us and we you really revolve that around storytelling which i think is powerful i don't think enough businesses and marketing teams and sales teams really know how to create a story around their product or their service. Um, Explain kind of that dynamic. How do you approach that? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the term itself is kind of um, descriptive or I tried to create, you know, legendary is a made up word. Um, (laughs) So I tried to create a word uh, or a term for this approach that was a little bit descriptive, in, descriptive in and of itself. And so um, I, I landed on legendeering because it's a, it's sort of a mashup of uh, the word legend, uh, thinking about story, 
and uh, and the idea of engineering or specifically designing something to serve a purpose. Um, and so what legendary really revolves around is uh, creating story driven, episodic branded content that's engineered to provide value to the customer base or the community that a particular business seeks to serve. Right. Um, so, uh, and, it, and it has, you know, there, there are a bunch of kind of component parts and pieces to it. Um, but those are really the high points, right? That it's story driven. It's about story. We are genetically predisposed to like stories. Um, in fact, anthropologists in their research, uh, who have studied, um, uh, you know, sort of the evolution of, uh, mankind's, uh, society and civilizations, uh, credits, they credit storytelling with the transition from um, nomadic hunter gatherers to living in cooperative societies, because storytelling is really what enabled us to pass down generational information from one generation to the next to essentially pass on the wisdom of previous generations. So we have, we have evolved um, to like stories. So uh, I don't see any reason to fight that evolution if we already know we like stories and we know we like stories because we all consume stories, right? We watch movies, we read books, we watch television shows, we listen to, uh, you know, uh, podcasts, we listen to true crime pro podcasts are incredibly popular. Um, so, so yeah, so we, we know we like stories. So why I don't see any reason to fight that uh, predisposition. So Let's let's tell stories, something we know how to do and we know people like. Um, and let's tell stories through a medium of formatted episodic content, which is another form of storytelling that we know is successful. Uh, if you've ever heard of television, then you know that episodic formatted programming works. Um, so, so we create formatted episodic story-driven programming that is branded to the business, but is engineered to deliver value to the community that that business seeks to serve. So it's not about the products and services. Again, we're shifting that focus. It's about providing value for the community and then tying that value to the business by branding it uh, to the business or the organization. So that's the that's the sort of the 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 high level view of what legendary is. So let me let me try to challenge you with a question about this, right? Like if you're okay. a business where you know, you're a service business. Let's say you're, you know, a landscaper, right? Um, sure. How do you, when you're a business that's sort of, I don't want to say common, but there's a lot of competition out there. How do you take this idea and create something branded or, or in terms of a story for that sort of an industry where, you know, it's, it's very common. It's kind of saturated. How do you make yourself unique or stand out with this concept? With that? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the way that I would start is, you know, the way we start with all businesses or all organizations that we work with is we start by talking to them about um, and kind of really digging into why they do what they do, right? What is the sort of motivating force behind either why they started their business, if it's a relatively young business, or if they're an owner operator or an entrepreneur, or if it's a more established business, what the sort of current mission uh, or or uh, goals of the business are, what are the values that the business operates around? Um, and, and how do we take those particular values, which tend to be unique to the individual uh, entrepreneur, owner operator, or the, the individual business? How do we take those things that are unique to that business uh, and create content, leverage those things to create or inform the content we create um, so that we are separating ourselves from the pack? So, uh, you know, in the example that you gave uh, of a landscaper who, you know, those businesses definitely can be a dime a dozen, right? Um you know, I, I would ask, why did you, why did you start? Where did your love of landscaping come from? What was the impetus behind starting the business? Right. Um, and, you know, uh, I would hone in on, uh, let's take that. Let's just continue with the hypothetical, say that um, it's something they grew up around uh, their, their grandmother um, instilled a love of gardening in them or a love of growing things or caring for plants in them as a young child. And so they they took that uh, 
that and in, and carried it over into their landscaping business. So maybe we create a series that helps um, that isn't focused on the mainstay of their business, which may be uh, you know lawn maintenance and cleanup and things like that. Um, but maybe we create a series around, um, you know, indoor uh, gardening, which is something that they're passionate about, something they have a love of, something that reminds them of the time they spent with their grandmother and something that their clients might find value in, right? That their ideal customers might find value in and that also helps further establish them as an expert in the area of uh, horticulture. So so yeah, so I mean, just off the top of my head, that's maybe uh, maybe a direction or the kind of way I would look at uh, helping a landscape company differentiate themselves. Um, not a lot of landscape companies would be focused on uh, teaching people the ins and outs of indoor gardening that they're not going to directly profit from. Uh, but I would I would argue that if you are an expert at indoor gardening, then it it's not a leap for someone to tie that to expertise in lawn maintenance uh, and exterior landscaping um, and uh, making sure that their the outside of their home looks great while they use the knowledge you've given them to make the inside of their home look great as well. Yeah, and I think it's interesting um, to think about how what you described is more of an emotional sort of, uh, I guess, direction because you know, you're not saying I'm a landscaper and you need, you need me. I'm the best one in the, in the city or whatever. You're saying, here's what my passion is. Here's why I'm passionate about what I do. And I think, do you feel like in a lot of your video content, people don't tap into the emotions of their, their potential customer and how to, to find them in terms of, I mean, not finding them, but finding their motivation to use this company or buy into this brand based on their own emotions and the emotions that's trans transmitted from the, uh, the actual video content. It sounds like it's almost an emotional transaction in a way. Would you say that's, that's accurate? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely emotionally driven and I think that's really important. And the reason why I think it's important is that you can, you can laundry list information. You can, I like to say vomit information at people, um, you know, till you're blue in the face all, do it all day long, but unless people care about the information you're sharing, yeah. it won't land, they won't retain it. So, you know, I like I'll take a perfect like I'll take an example for myself, right? Um, there are things that I'm interested in. I have a lot of, you know, as you know, um, in in my sort of uh, uh, life outside of work, one of my hobbies, I guess you could call it, is uh, is is triathlons. Um, right. So I'm, I'm a, I'm an Ironman triathlete. Um, I'm very active. I like getting outside and exercising and I know an awful lot about, um, exercising more than most people do. And the reason is because it's something I care about because it's something I'm interested in. Right. Um, but if I turn to somebody who, who isn't the least bit interested in triathlon and started reciting, information to them about um iron man and the history of iron man triathlon they'd tune out after a couple of seconds right um and and the reason is because they just don't really care right so you they would listen politely but then if you ask them about any of that information later on they would have no sort of you know firm recollection of it right because they just don't care they're not that interested and so what we seek to do by uh by by working to forge emotional connections, by creating opportunities for, um, you know, the audience to empathize with or identify with um, the the companies or the organizations that we represent in our in the content that we create. Um, you know, what we seek to do is give opportunity for the audience to care, to generate an emotional attachment to 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 give a crap about. Um, the the business and the organization and the people behind it and the values that they stand for and thereby to actually become interested in that business or that organization and what they do right if they care then they'll become then there's an opportunity for them to become interested but if they don't care they're never going to become interested so you can you can vomit information at them all day long but it's never really going to stick until they care 
do you have any particular stories? I mean, you don't have to name clients, but can you give us an example of um, something that that you experienced with a client where this really was transformational in terms of their 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 branding and their interest from from potential leads or customers? Any examples of that that you've seen have positive results? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I've got one that one that pops to mind right away. Um, you know, uh, had a client who um, uh, owns a business that not a lot of women are involved in, um, and uh, she'd had a lot of people approach her over the years to quote unquote tell her story. And most of those pieces of content and pieces of marketing that those folks had delivered for her, um, generally speaking, uh, didn't didn't really do much more than just recite the facts about her story, right? Essentially just saying um, that she's a woman who works in a uh, very male dominated business and uh, that owns a business in that space and is successful in that space. And so what we sought to do instead was create a piece of content that wasn't just about, or that wasn't really about, um, you know, who she is, but was more about why she does what she does. And um, she uses that piece of content to this day. It lives on her website. This is, you know, going back a number of years. Um, She was actually one of the first clients we worked with uh, when I was initially starting Talix Media uh, after coming out of my career in the entertainment industry. And um, she still uses that piece of content to this day. Uh, And one of the things she does when she does public speaking engagements is she uses that as an introduction. Um, So she'll have, uh, she'll have the, the venue play the, that video before she comes out. It's a quick 60 second piece. They'll play the video. She'll come out and say, okay, now who wants to become um, a pilot? And almost, almost without fail, every hand in the room goes up. Wow. Um, because of the piece of content that we created. So, so, and also because, I mean, you know, which we couldn't have done without her, right? I mean, it's not just about, it's about how we told her story and how we positioned that, uh, you know, don't want to diminish, um, you know, uh, her role in that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, that that's one that springs to mind right off the top of my head, but, you know, we've got uh, tons of examples of, of, you know, we've done advertising campaigns that are all very story driven, uh, for a law firm that have been incredibly successful. Um, we've done fundraising uh, content um, that uh, for a number of nonprofits that has been very successful. One of my nonprofit clients, you know, I'm proud to say that we've been a part, uh, our content has been a part of raising over a quarter of a million dollars for their organization. Wow. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's a, uh, and it's because we have that story-driven emotional focus. It gives people an opportunity to connect with and identify with and empathize with um, the uh, the businesses and the organizations that we feature in our content. So to sum it up, Tom, and this is great, I think what people need to think about is, first of all, you need video content and you need to start out with your why and you need to take yourself out of your own shoes and put yourself in your customer customer shoes. And really understand the people that are buying from you or planning to buy from you and what their fears are, what their emotions are, why they could use your services, how it's going to help them feel better or change their life, inspire them in some way. Would you agree that's kind of the first start when coming up with this strategy? Those are the things you need to think about. And then you come to someone like you who can actually produce the media and deliver, help deliver it for you would that would that be sort of the, the the best kind of starting point for people listening to this yeah i mean absolutely look if you if you're going to do it on your own i mean the first thing is you're 100 right everybody needs video um and and whether anybody listening chooses to work with me or not uh, i will keep saying that uh till you know till i'm blue in the face till the cow comes cows come home uh, yeah. whatever <laughs> whatever saying you want to use um but everybody needs video. It is unquestionably the most effective communication tool we have at our disposal. So it's it would be a mistake not to use it. Another statistic I like to I like to throw out at people just to really drive home how valuable video can be 
is that uh, businesses or organizations that use video as part of their marketing marketing strategy, on average, tend to grow revenue year over year by a 49% higher rate than businesses that don't. Wow. So if you're not using video as part of your marketing strategy, you're potentially leaving almost 50% of your annual revenue growth on the table. Um, so it's definitely something that people should take advantage of. Now, if you want to do it on your own, um, then yeah, you need to think through uh, all of the strategy. Uh, like you were talking about, Ryan, you need to think through um, who your audience is, how you can deliver value to them, what stories you can tell, um, uh, why you do what you do, all of those kinds of things. Um, if you're a little bit of a bigger business or you're a little bit more established and you have the resources to hire somebody like me to do it, I would look for somebody with a background in uh, episodic content or the entertainment industry in particular to help you craft a strategy uh, and to work with you to actually go through that entire process. Um, when I when people ask me what I do uh, or what Talix Media does, I say we're a full service media production company, and that's because we work with our clients from the initial uh, concept development stage or the we know we want to do some video, but we're not sure what, what we want to do stage. Um, that sort of initial concept development and ideation stage all the way through the production process, through the physical production in the middle of it, and then into post-production and on to final delivery of the project uh, in a variety of different formats and however we're using it across platform. So, so yeah, so, you know, I, I think if you've got the, if you've got the resources, um, I think you're always, your, your best bet is always to outsource and hire uh, an expert rather than trying to become expert yourself in something um, that you're not. Like you said, I've got, you know, at this stage, actually, I've got uh, a little over 21 years uh, working in production. So um, it would take an awful long time for uh, an individual who owns a business or runs a business to generate the level of experience that I have, uh, you know, that I could walk in the door with tomorrow. Um, and, and that's just the reality of hiring an expert, right? Um, it's the reason why if you got a leaky pipe, you hire a plumber and you don't, uh, try to learn how plumbing works all by yourself. Um, right. so, so yeah, uh, you know, I think that's, that's the thing is, is a, uh, if everybody listening takes anything away from this podcast, I would want them to take away that they should be using video, um, that they should be, uh, thinking about their audience first, that uh, that they the content they create should be for the audience, not for themselves, um, and uh, and that if they can, they should hire an expert to execute uh, on their vision to help grow their company using video. And I will say, I mean, it does cost money, obviously, to hire an expert, but I will tell you, there's value to it because somebody who's worked in video in the past, myself too, I've been on productions, I've worked on productions, and it's hours it, it's not just you know shooting a quick video and then saying goodbye um getting what you need it's hours of lighting production time the ideation like you said the scripting uh finding locations uh having the talent there lighting i mean there's there's a million things that go on into a, a well-produced video that people don't even see because they watch it for 30 seconds or a minute and think oh okay that's it um, so the value is there because you, like someone like Tom, knows the, the 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 background and how to how to create this video and the production time that goes into it, which could take days, weeks, or months, depending on the extent of the video. Um, but that's why I think people need to understand it's important to pay for that because you're paying for the time, the expertise, and the work involved. So, Tom, where can people reach you if they uh, want to contact you and get get going with a project? Uh, yeah, I, so very, I try to keep that as easy as possible. Um, people can visit our website. It's just talexmedia.com, T-A-L-E-X media.com. A uh, super easy way to uh, get a hold of us. There's ways to uh, email us directly through the website, or you can always connect with us on social media. On uh, all platforms, our handle is the same. It's just at Talex Media LLC. Um, and, uh, so if you search that, if you throw that, uh, that social media handle into Google, it'll just populate a whole page of, uh, social media, uh, 
uh, platforms and you can select one and connect with us there and uh, and message us through any number of applications. So there's a lot of different ways to get a hold of us. Uh, but yeah, easiest is visit the website, talixmedia.com or find us on social media at Talix Media LLC. Tom, thank you so much. I hope if you're listening, you got some good value out of this episode. If you want to check out how to start a, a good video campaign, Tom is your man. Go to his website. Thanks again, Tom. It's been a great conversation and good luck on your next uh, triathlon. It's absolutely my pleasure, Ryan. Thanks so much for having me. And if anybody does have any questions, isn't sure how to get started, um, my door is always open. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions uh, you may have. I've got 20 plus years of, uh, of uh, production experience rattling around in my head and I love to talk about what I do. So don't hesitate to reach out and take advantage of, uh, of me as a resource. Great. Thanks, Tom. Have a good one. Thanks, Ryan. You too. Hey, everybody. It's Ryan here. Look, sales can be difficult. Maybe you're up at night thinking how you're going to make that next sale. Maybe your sales team is struggling and you don't know what to do. Well, I've written a book called Customer Relationship Management Exposed. It's designed to help you figure out a process and system to be successful in sales and grow your business like you never have before. With Customer Relationship Management Exposed, you can make the right choices to find the right sales system to increase your sales exponentially. Pick it up on Amazon today.